Welcome to another edition of Flea Market Fantasy, the world's second greatest Bronze Age era comic book podcast. Joining me as always is new Mike L, Kevin Jank. I don't know if you know this, Mike Dell, but Jank is actually Lithuanian for he who devours your entrails and thoroughly enjoys it. That's a Lobo reference from this book. <laughs> and uh, yeah. why don't you tell the kids what we're reading today, Jank? Uh, today we're reading Legion 89, uh, issue number four from DC Comics. Came out in 1989. And uh, as you can tell from the title, <laughs> yeah. Legion 89. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I don't know anything about any of these characters, so this is one of the special episodes of Free Market <laughs> Fantasy where we get to learn. Yeah, yeah research heavy. Get to learn. I've not countered any of these characters other than Lobo before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does feature Lobo. That's why, primarily why you picked it, because of Lobo, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the reason. Right. Well, there you go. Uh, before we get started, though, let's remind everybody, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. I checked today, Jack, 163 subscribers. Holy hell. Yes, yeah, so I think we picked up like eight since last week. Quite the growth. Yeah, we're going, we're going strong. And, uh, as, please. Yeah, so we're, uh, thankful for all the support. Thank you very much. And again, the goal is 500 and, uh, hopefully we can get there before the show ends, which seems unlikely, but, uh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But all right. So, uh, Legion, it's an acronym. You know, yes. Like one of them L period E Sick period. <laughs> well, that's a that's an obscure movie reference. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this one, Legion stands for Licensed Extra Governmental Interstellar Operatives Network. Oh, that doesn't seem forced at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Not since Shield have they really tried to. Come up with something that works so desperately. <clears throat> well, my my favorite is uh, an obscure TV reference. Uh, Get a life. That's sitcom starring Chris Elliott. There's an mm-hmm. episode where he adopts an alien from space, kind of like ET. But he call it, but this alien's real ugly and just spits all this goo everywhere. So he calls him Spewy, and he says it's an acronym standing for Special Person Entering Our World Egg Yolk. And that's kind of exactly <laughs> what this acronym feels like to me. Like yeah, they just started it and then they just had to end it somehow. So they're like, all right, <laughs> let's go. Just add enough words at the end. But this series ran for 70 issues from 1989 to 1994. And each year they changed it. So Legion 89, Legion 90, Legion 90. Like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they did that. <laughs> why would they do that? But... Yeah, it's not like that seems relevant. I mean, they're out in space. Oh, yeah. The year seems even less important. <laughs> yeah. It's not like they're going to, like, we have to tie this into current pop culture. Yes. So I don't get it either. Uh, the main characters in the book that were first introduced in a uh, three issue miniseries in 1988 called Invasion. Yeah. And right. That was created by uh, Keith Giffen, Bill Mantlo, and Todd McFarlane. Ooh, that's weird. And the characters were prisoners on an alien uh, of the alien alliance who and then they escaped a prison spacecraft. So I guess this alien alliance was a thing in D.C. I don't know. Do you know anything about D.C.? Uh, the alien alliance. I'm assuming in, well, invasion. I know a little bit about it. It's about these aliens. that are like telepathic. They kind of look like the traditional grays a little bit, but they're yellow. They got like giant ass teeth. Um, hmm. And I think like that was a big story about them invading and stuff like that. Like they did a version of it in the Arrowverse when I was still watching that show. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Most of everything uh, Jack knows comes from WB Network. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. Stuff, when it comes so. to DC, yeah, uh, that's kind of my source. And as you know, also we'll talk about Lobo later. I mostly know about him from the you know Superman animated series in the '90s. So <laughs> right. TV has been very very good to me. <laughs> All right. So uh, the ongoing series tells how these uh, prisoners there, they escape, and then they overthrow a planet ruled by computer tyrants, and then they form an interplanetary police force. Yeah. You, it's very sure Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, now that you bring it up. Yeah, it does sound. They break out of prison, wait, they get together, <laughs> and then true. decide to police the galaxy themselves. <laughs> Holy hell. Yeah, I never even thought of that, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. Uh, all right, so the main characters. First off, we have a guy named Viral Dox the Second, and uh, he's like a green fella with blonde hair, and he's a scientific genius. He's the team leader, and he is a clone of Viral Dox the First, 
who was the original Brainiac. Yeah, so, that's right. I think it's not the actual Brainiac we were familiar with, like the one who was the knowledge base of Krypton, right? Well, when I grew up, Brainiac was a green dude who was really smart. So that's the Brainiac I'm familiar with. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess he's this clone of that fella. Okay, but, uh, that makes sense. He's also uh, green, also yeah. very smart, kind of evil. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, then we also have uh, someone just known as the Durlin, and he is a nameless, shape-shifting alien from the planet Durla. He is later revealed to be R.J. Brand, the benefactor of the Legion of Superheroes, and none of those words mean anything to me. They mean anything to you? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Was he know. in this book? Well, yeah, he's the he's the monster guy with the cloak and his the squid face and whatever the legs. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. But I okay. guess he's like a, that's a disguise, I guess. So when he's R.J. Brand later, that's just he's just a normal looking human fellow. Yeah, when I was looking on Wikipedia, that was the picture they showed. It was just like some like Texan looking guy, like Ted Turner yes. or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, all right. So I'm like, that can't be that guy, the guy with the tentacles. Yeah, that's him, though. The guy on the cover, actually, with Lobo, <laughs> you could say. All right, next up, we have uh, Strata, a crystalline female from the planet Dryad. Now, in this book, she is neither crystalline nor a female. <laughs> oh, okay. Because the way I didn't notice any crystalline people, but. Well, if you look carefully, you could see crystalline at the end, but she's the big uh, rock creature, kind of like the thing. It looks like oh, that guy. Yeah. And I guess their species, they don't get assigned gender until they reach a certain age. So they don't re- like she doesn't know she's a she until a couple issues from now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, after Lobo took out her chest and she had to, like yes. go boob back. <laughs> well, <laughs> Is that what happened? But if you look when he rips out her chest here at the end, uh, there's like crystalline chest underneath. Mm. Yeah. So that's Strata. Next up, we have. She doesn't seem to know what's going on with her species. She's like wondering, I wonder if all dryads are like this. Like, don't you know any dryads? (laughs) Yeah, no. You got me there. (laughs) I don't know. I didn't. I did a little (laughs) bit of research. Not too much. Uh, Then we have Stealth. She's a a foxy female alien from the planet Grix, G-R-Y-X. And uh, she's like the orange skin girl with the short white hair in this book. Kind of like dressed like Marilyn Monroe, but from space. (laughs) A little bit. (laughs) Uh, Like a white flowing dress thing. And yeah, uh, yeah, she's real good looking. But I guess she's like a real feral. And she like, um, I read her story. She was like... uh, that was the word, almost like excommunicated <laughs> to like abandon in the woods. And she was kind of raised by herself in the woods. And so she's kind of like feral and whatnot. So in issue seven, she goes into heat and she gets super horny and she yeah. rapes Viral Docks the second. Whoa, this got dark real quick. <laughs> yes, it did. An issue. <laughs> and, it, and it's not like she slipped something in his drink. She, the old Bill Cosby, she physically beat the hell out of him and then had her way with him. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they still kept her on the team after that, huh? <laughs> yeah, because they said it was beyond her control. Like, she does have no memory of it. It's just her species. That's how they mate. Oh. So, but this Viral Docs fella, <laughs> like, like, she would have killed him. Like, that's how violent it was. But they, <laughs> they did a thing where they cloned him again and put his brain into that one. And so he's like, what? <laughs> He impregnated her. Uh oh. They had a baby, and apparently they stayed together, kind of, and raised the baby. Oh so, wow! Yeah, He's a very that? forgiving uh, brainiac, I guess. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I think later on, way like years later in the two thousands or something, she ended up dying, uh, trying to protect her uh, grown son. At that point, uh, some alien or something came in, and, and she protected him. She died. And then she was brought back during that whole Black Lantern thing. Remember that when they brought oh, the deck back? They yeah. would chip. Remember they brought chip back. So <laughs> I think she was part of that as well. All right, so that's still. She doesn't seem very feral. Like she's yeah. just pretty fancy. She's got like nice earrings on and stuff. It's yeah. like <laughs> very attractive lady. She's not exactly, you know, Wolverine running around in his in a tunic or something in the woods. I, believe, I was just <laughs> as surprised as you when I read that. Yeah, I was like, wow, this doesn't seem like feral. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then uh, next up we have a guy named Garen Beck. He ca- he's just a normal-looking human fellow. He kind of looks like Legion. He's got a, like a Legion haircut, like uh, 
Well, Legion for Marvel, not Legion. Yeah. Or kind of Star Fox, he reminds me of from uh, Marvel, I would say. Uh, the suppose. old arrows. Kind of got that, kind of got that Wolverine-ish kind of weird points to his hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I've seen other pictures of him where he's got the big flat top. Flat top. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Garrett Beck, and he's an ex-policeman from the planet Karn, C-A-I-R-N. And in this book, Lobo's out to get him because Lobo believes he killed one of his space dolphins because Lobo <laughs> keeps space dolphins. Of course he does. Why not? <laughs> All right. Now we have one more uh, character from this Legion group, uh, Larissa Malor. She is one of the champions of Talok 8. So she's a good <laughs> fighter and whatnot. And uh, she's, uh, I don't know, I wrote some down here, but clearly autocorrect messed it up because these words don't make any sense. So I'm not going to even read them. <laughs> what is going on there? Only you knew an editor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, she, she's like a blue skinned uh, lady. And I guess she's a good fighter and whatnot. And I think she becomes the spokesperson for the team a couple issues after this. And uh, sadly, in issue 21, she dies. Spoiler Dang. Line. Yeah, wow. <laughs> they they kept stealth, but they got rid of her, huh? <laughs> I guess someone, uh, if I'm remembering properly, someone brainwashed her daughter, and then her daughter came to visit her and murder her. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Kids are trouble. No, that's, that's, that's the worst yeah. Mother's Day I've ever heard of. <laughs> it's very bad. All right, so those are the the yeah, members of the proper Legion team. But now for the main event, the guy uh, Jank is here to see a uh, Lobo. Lobo. Yeah, who I think does join the team for at least a while, yes. right? Yeah, he joins them at issue five. He starts like this is the issue where he like this issue ends. Uh, Vero the rough Dox. introduction. Yeah, he's giving him the, <laughs> about to give him the proposition. So uh, Lobo's first appearance was a Mega Man three nineteen eighty three. Yeah, and took a look by, at that cover. And, yep, that's not Lobo that I know. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't look at it. <laughs> but he was created by Roger Slifer and Keith Giffen. Oh. Now, what I want to know about this Lobo fella in Omega Man 3, because wasn't uh, – what's the book that we did – Mike L. and I did from Marvel? Wasn't that uh, Omega um, – mm. what was that one? It was It's Omega something, but it wasn't Omega Man. What was it? Uh, um, the, the issue we did, he fought the Hulk. And uh, – I don't know. I can't remember. Mega the uh, Mega the Unknown. Uh, uh, I'll clean this up in post. Anyway, what was the Omega Man from DC? What was that? I don't know. Honestly, I, I've never heard of it. I, I saw the picture, I think, on the Wikipedia page or DC fandom page. But I, it was just like it looks like fourth world type stuff. It looks like it's something oh. to do with apocalypse or something like that, maybe. But like there's somebody looks kind of, you know, he's got Lobo's face kind of. I don't think he has the facial hair at all. Uh, but he's wearing like a purple and orange, like skin tight suit. It's like, what the, what the hell is this? This isn't Lobo. Well, Lobo's <laughs> appearance in this book isn't what I know Lobo. To yeah. Lobo. Yeah. He definitely bulked up and, uh, you know, got a little more, more WWE after this. Yeah. So basically, uh, Lobo's an alien bounty hunter. Now on like DC fandom and stuff, he's billed as seven foot six, 640 pounds. And. <laughs> But in this book, he's maybe five ten, buck sixty five. Yeah, he, he does not look big at all in this book. Yeah, like a normal size guy. So that was weird. This is the kind of wrestler that Larry would not want to watch. <laughs> Doing <laughs> flips all around. <laughs> and also, uh, like the Lobo I know, not only is he all jacked and stuff, but like you mentioned, facial hair. Like he has like a big mustache, kind of like uh, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan or like the <laughs> kind of down to the chin, the full kind of goatee and mustache thing. And then usually very scraggly, like, you know, unshaven, uh, like just long hair tattoos, you know, super big muscles and stuff like that. Like very who Jason Momoa should have played instead of Aquaman. Yeah, oh yeah. There you go. That's a good description. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, his skin though is like pale white, kind of like Solomon Grundy esque. Like, uh, yes. Yeah. But, um, in this book, he's pale white and everything, but he's smaller. He's kind of got crazy hair, but his face, he doesn't have facial hair, really. It almost looks like a tattoo, like a black, tat, like flat to his face. You know what I mean? It's like weird. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really look like hair, no. It's it's like coming yeah. out of the corners of his mouth almost down to his chin and not 
a mustache. Like, it's weirdly shaped. Like, yeah, it's like, why would you get a tattoo like that with like, a weird bulge in the middle? It's, it's if you're in line, it's one thing, but this is like, I don't know, yeah, it's very strange. So his real name is unpronounceable, but as you referenced at the beginning of the show, it means one who devours your entrails and thoroughly enjoys it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he's or the last, you know, you translated from Spanish. <laughs> and he's the last of the Caesarian people because he killed everyone else. I think it's Zarnian. Oh, Zarnian. Caesarian. <laughs> Caesarian. <laughs> <laughs> they all, you know how they were all born, yep. <laughs> Zarian. <All right. laughs> but uh yeah, he killed everyone else. Apparently he uh did you, did you hear the story how he killed everyone else? Yeah. He like came up with some kind of bug or something, right? That like would Yeah, just, some like, sort of like, scorpion. Like some Yeah. Like, and, yeah. <laughs> Which again doesn't seem very lobo like. It seems like he's, you know, <laughs> Not the scientific type to be in the lab creating a better <laughs> yes. sport. I was taken aback by that as well. Yeah. And as I mentioned earlier, he he kept a, a space dolphins as pets. He is super strong, invulnerable, and basically immortal. When he is injured, he has accelerated healing. And at one time, any drop of his blood uh, would create or could create another Lobo. Ah, yes. I think I've seen panels of that where there's like a whole... Yeah bunch of them <laughs> fighting together oddly enough he is vulnerable to bullets <laughs> which is strange <laughs> so he can just shoot him and basically <laughs> kill him but he'll, he'll come back uh yeah. he's also vulnerable to whole, toxins. Whole of it then because he'll be bleeding all over the place and he's vulnerable to toxins and i think that is one of the storylines coming up after this is viral docs like slowly poisons him to weaken him so that docs can get his blood and he makes a bunch of lobos and they take over <laughs> some planet or something with all these lobos but he's essentially an alien wolverine basically <laughs> and they yeah. they make uh like keith giffen makes no um questions about the fact that yeah he basically ripped off wolverine to create lobo like he was inspired by wolverine to do this so. yeah this was the late 90s when everything was getting more you know gritty and the popular things were like wolverine and punisher and you know, even Cable and Ghost Rider was getting huge at this time. People were just like, yeah, he looks cool. He's got a big flaming motorcycle. Like, <laughs> like here's Lobo. He's got a space motorcycle. Like, yeah, cool. <laughs> and, yeah, he had his own series from 1993 to 1999, and that lasted 66 issues. What else? Uh, those should covers look amazing. Like, they look oh, – yeah. whoever's doing the art on those is fantastic. No idea. Uh, anything else we should know about Lobo there, Jay? Uh, like I said, I think that I first encountered him because of the Superman animated series where he was voiced by Brad Garrett. Oh, <laughs> um, really? Brad Garrett? Yeah, yeah. Everybody loves <laughs> it Rain. made sense. Yeah, it, was, it, it worked. Uh, I, re, I was rewatching one of those episodes this week, and I was like, oh, yeah, hey, it's Brad Garrett. <laughs> does, does Lobo love Raymond? <laughs> I'm guessing not. Uh, <laughs> doesn't seem to love a lot of people. But I think basically the premise of that episode was like, uh, you know, some kind of collector, basically DC's version of the collector, essentially, who gathers up the last of every species, uh, wanted Superman for his collection. So he sent Lobo to do it. And Lobo was, you know, too stupid to realize, hey, I'm the last Zarnian. So, like, <laughs> yeah, he's going to want me too. So I should probably not do this. But I was just, just going to ask. Yeah. Because there's a lot of Kryptonians still flying around, right? Aren't there a couple? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess on the show, there probably wasn't, I mean, I know Supergirl shows up eventually, but yeah, this was early on in the run where there was nobody, yeah. <laughs> just Superman. So, uh, all right, uh, that's Lobo, and this is, uh, I know when, uh, they did the beat, the, the new 52, they, uh, they tried trotting out some new version of Lobo that was like, even skinnier than this one, and I think he was like a teenager, and like everybody just hated it. And I think within, you know, within a year, they had already been like, hey, that's not the real Lobo. <laughs> this is an imposter. And they're like, they brought out a real <laughs> Lobo who looks more like the actual one. Yeah, <laughs> Lobo's way cooler when he's a big jacked badass than a uh, skinny, normal sized guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't need to reinvent the wheel. I, uh, but I guess they were actually going to the original version of him when he's a skinny. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. A little bit. But he just doesn't seem very intimidating in this book, you know, <laughs> even though he's murdering. That's a little cooler on the cover, I would say. Yeah, because you can't see the rest a of A little more like, like facial hair. 
So, all right, uh, you mentioned the cover. The artist there is Kevin McGuire. Would you like to describe it for us? Oh, Kevin McGuire, he did that uh, Justice League uh, international book, right? I, I know we've encountered him before, and I he did do Justice League. So the one where uh, – who's that guy? Where uh, Guy Gardner got punched yeah, by Guy Gardner. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's the way it was. Batman <laughs> punched Guy Gardner. Yeah, he probably did do that. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah, I like this stuff there. Um, so we got the DC kind of corner box there. It's a DC new format. I'm not sure what's so new about it, but you know, I guess they put the title or the year on the cover. That's, that's new. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we got the creator names up top and then it says Legion 89 and the, the four is over there in the right corner. Uh, and then it's basically just a big kind of close up shot of Lobo. With a gun to what's the guy's name? Uh, the guy with the, the tentacle face, the Durlin, <laughs> the Durlin. The Durlin. Yeah, yeah, that guy's there. He's got Lobo's got one hand around his, I guess his neck, <laughs> if that's what you call yeah. that. It's where the neck should be. I, I don't know what a tentacle man has, but uh, he's got him kind of by the neck, and he's got a gun pressed to his head, and it says, "Buy this book, or I'll shoot this uh guy." <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Lobo, uh, there's humor to him, right? There's a lot of... uh, Yeah, he's kind of a big, you know, tough guy, but he's, you know, maybe not the brightest. So there's definitely always humor there. Kind of a lot of Deadpool in him, too, right? Yeah, yeah, you could definitely say that. There's definitely some crossover there. I don't think he breaks the fourth wall or anything like that, but... Yeah, but just like the how violent and murderous he is and still cracking jokes. Both mercenaries, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a w- extremely well drawn cover, I would say, by, uh, McGuire. And, uh, it'll, yeah, okay. Lobo looks pretty good here. Yeah. yeah. Just, you can't really see how, you know, muscular he is. <laughs> <laughs> Lack of muscle. Yeah. Um, all right. And we should mention, uh, the creators here for this specific story. Uh, Keith Giffen, we've talked about before. He, remember, uh, well, he did that art in that Justice Society annual we really liked. With Dr. Yeah, Fate. He, that's a part of that for sure. And that's where He's we the co-writer of that Justice League International issue, uh, him oh, and James okay. Dickas. But uh, yeah, we gave you his whole background back then. But uh, here he's just the plotter, and I think he did the breakdowns. And the artist is a fellow named Barry Kitson, who I am not familiar with. Like he, uh, <laughs> yeah, you ever, you ever hear of Barry Kitson? They they I've run across him too much either, or at all. Uh, he is a British artist. He started out drawing Spider-Man and Transformers for Marvel UK in 1985. He did a bunch of Judge Dredd from 86 to 89. Cool. He had uh, he didn't do the issue we read, though, but he came in after no. that, I think. He did 200, He has 242 penciling credits at DC, including The Adventures of Superman, Asriel, Legion of Superheroes, and Batman Shadow of the Bat. He drew yeah. the first 18 issues of this here Legion book. And with issue 25, he became the writer and artist for 19 of the next 22 issues. And he was just the writer for issue 48 and the third annual. So he had quite a history here at Legion. He returned yeah. to Marvel in 2007. And among other things, he did 11 issues of The Amazing Spider-Man. So, Oh, I'm sure I have those then. Maybe I have run across yeah. Barry Kitson. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Even know and, it. And the uh, other writer here with Keith Giffen is Alan Grant. And we've talked about him before because uh, he did Judge Dredd, I believe, right? Yeah. So so those are the creators for this here book. All right, Jank, now we open it up and we see the title of this is The Godfather Pulls the Strings. And I guess so there's um, a Godfather quote at the bottom of this page. Uh, it says it was a pattern he was to see often. The Don helping those in misfortune whose misfortune he had partly caused. Mario Puzo, The Godfather. Yeah, and uh, the Godfather in this would be Viral Dox, I would imagine, right? He's the guy pulling yeah. all the strings. Seems like. Yeah, I guess this is early on. They've taken down the the computer planet, essentially, and everybody's just kind of staring at their TVs, you know, waiting for new orders, essentially. So he's kind of trying yeah. to keep the system going. Mo- at it. Modern day America. <laughs> 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 yeah, so Viral Docs is in uh, something happened to Viral Docs where he got badly burned. So <laughs> that's right. It, like his face, it, you just see little like bubbles and stuff sometimes on his face. But I guess he still isn't completely healed. They, they put him in some healing chamber or something. But he's still working and uh, he's doing something on the in the 
machines and the computers because he's trying to reprogram them, right, to give different messages to the people or something. Correct. Yeah. I believe. What's going on? So while he's working on all this computer stuff, that uh, former cop fella, who I can't even remember his name, and we just talked about him. I think his last name is Beck, <laughs> B-E-K. I think Karen Beck or something. Yeah. Like so he walks in and he's talking to uh, Vero Docs and uh, what's what are they talking about here? Uh, let's see. So they're just kind of debating the whole thing, uh, and then eventually, yeah, he says without the tyrants, Kaluans can't do anything. Odds are they aren't even handling the basics like eating and drinking. It's been three days since we shut them down. If I waste any more time, and uh. The cop guys, he's, he's like, yeah, yeah, I get you. Don't, don't disturb you. That's fine. But he's like, he's really worried because he ran over, quote unquote, Lobo's pet fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he knows Lobo's going to be pissed, and yep. he he knows that Lobo has a reputation, although he doesn't really know Lobo. It doesn't seem like, but he knows what everyone says about Lobo. So he's trying he not to find act anybody anywhere. Like so, <laughs> wherever you are in the universe, Lobo can find you. Yeah, he's trying not to act scared, though. He's like, there's no way Lobo can find us here. But deep down, he's terrified that yeah. Lobo is coming to get him. So <laughs> That's mostly like the first half of this issue is him trying to tell various people, you know, you think Lobo's coming? And them being like, yeah, probably is. He's like, no, no. There's no way he can find us here. No way. <laughs> so, yeah, he leaves Viral Docs, and then he goes and talks to Stealth, the uh, foxy orange skin lady. And mm. uh, the same thing, talking about Lobo and everything and whatever. And, uh, Again, like here's here's her dialogue. No, I mean the city. It's like a ghost town. The people all just wandered off, didn't say a word to each other. They just went. I've been on some strange worlds, but this has to rank primo weirdo. That doesn't sound like a feral. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty eloquent. <laughs> so they they keep talking, then they uh, the two of them walk down inside the little uh, city that they're at, and we meet that rock person, Strata. Mm-hmm. Who at this point looks like a fella, but it'll be a lady soon. I don't know. <laughs> and well, you'll be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just walking around again. They're just still talking about Lobo and everything. And Strat is like, "Yeah, Lobo's coming. He's definitely coming." And uh, here's where dryads like. I wonder if all dryads find waiting around so tedious, or am I just brimming with the impatience of youth? Like, have you never like talked to another dryad? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, maybe they got uh, imprisoned young or something, and taken from their planet. Yeah. It's just like Guardians of the Galaxy, like you mentioned. And, uh, yeah, how many ideas do you think exist between Marvel and DC? Like six, and they just keep ripping each other off back and forth? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and then Image just ripped them off without even, like, putting any pretense on it. It's like, yeah, this Dark Claw guy looks just like Wolverine. Who cares? <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Whatever his name was. So then that uh, Beck fella, if that is his name, he, he walks out and he leaves the uh, Strata and Stealth. They're chatting and he goes to talk to that Larissa lady. The cha- Oh, yeah. Garen is uh, Garen Beck. And uh, yeah. and again, it's kind of like the same thing. Just. Uh, yeah. Talking. Here's where she drops the knowledge about uh, where Lobo's name comes from. Uh, it's he who devours your entrails and thoroughly enjoys it. And then we finally get our first look at Lobo in the book. Uh, same world, a different city, though. So he's he's narrowing it down. He's getting closer. Yeah, and uh, we should mention he just has red eyes as well with, like, black around the eyes. Yeah, I, I just don't get what's going on with his mouth here, like that black <laughs> stuff. I don't either. Uh, yeah, if it is facial hair, it's very strange. I don't know why you'd go with that look. Yeah. It almost looks like he ate some peanut butter cups or something, and he just uh, got some chocolate on his face. <laughs> And he doesn't know. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. Fight that off. <laughs> Get a napkin. But so, yeah, he's trying to track down the guy who he thinks uh, ran over his uh, space dolphin there. And again, he's we see him like fetal gizzard or <laughs> fetal jizz at some point, I think. Uh, yeah, he's got a little, yeah, some odd expression. Things. He also wears little uh, fingerless leather gloves. Yeah. But again, he's yeah. not, he got not intimidating in the least. Like he's <laughs> not a big fella. He's just an average guy in some jeans and some uh, knee-high boots. <laughs> so, yeah, not scared of this guy. But anyway, 
Now we come back to Viral Docs. He's still working on his computers. And in comes the Durlin guy, the squid face guy with the tentacles popping out of his robe. And uh, they're having a little conversation. And I guess they have a problem with each other because the Durlin, he's concerned that Viral Docs, because this Viral Docs fella, you know, he's a clone of Brainiac. So he's very yeah. smart, but he's also very conniving. Pretty know? immoral, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh Viral Docs, he he wants to make it seem like, oh, yeah, he's reprogramming computers because we got to tell these people to eat and take care of themselves and all that kind of stuff. But he wants to make the uh image that they see on the computers uh his image. Like he wants to be the guy telling them this. So mm-hmm. and the Durlin's like, ah, that's not a good idea. You shouldn't be taking the power. You know, it seems like you just want to get control of these people. You know, if you're using your image as the computer voice or whatever. And uh, so they have a little argument about it and they, they fight. And the Derlin just whips his butt, not even close. Yeah, it just smacks him around, <laughs> and uh, he just kind of jumps over his uh, kick, and just gives him one slap in the face, like a karate chop in the face. Yeah. So uh, Viral Docs is like, "All right, all right, all right, I'm done. You win." <laughs> and uh, and the Derlin says, "Hey, you know, I you don't have to agree with me. I just want you to consider my point of view." Yeah. And, so that probably wasn't worth nice. fighting over. If yeah, <laughs> if that's all oh, it is, then why even fight? It? Yeah, it should be a winner take all situation, you know. Yep. So, I don't know. like strap your wrists together and get knives like that uh, Michael Jackson bad video, you know. <laughs> yes. And then do one of those. <laughs> that's how you solve a problem. <laughs> but yeah, Severo Docs is like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll I'll consider it. I'll think about it. He's not going to think about it. He's no. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely going to be all him. Yeah. Girl Docs wanted him to pick, like, you know, a good looking lady, <laughs> but no. <laughs> it's going to be this guy. So now it's the next day, and, like, the sun comes up, and I don't know. They think, uh, uh, I guess he, he gets it fixed because the lights come on in the city. Um, uh-huh. So I guess if everything's good now. The place is all fixed up. Uh, and. Okay, with the power back, the deprogramming of the populace can begin already. Their blind obedience to the tyrants is being wiped from their minds. And uh the tentacle guy's all like, oh, yeah, the program runs. And uh, Viral Docs is like, yeah, it runs. I knew a healthy debate would help you make the right choice. And Viral Docs doesn't seem happy. I don't think he <laughs> – he, uh I'm pretty sure he just ignored that guy's advice. I would imagine. I guess he's hoping yeah. he won't look into it. <laughs> so – now we cut back to uh, Lobo, and he's flying around on his little motorcycle in the sky there. And, mm-hmm. uh, what would you? He uh, tracked down the uh, the license plate, essentially, of the car that hit his dolphin. <laughs> uh, but I guess the person driving it at the time was not the you know our um, what's his name, Garen Beck. Yeah, Garen. It was not Garen. It was some other guy. So he goes to this guy's apartment on his space motorcycle. And uh, he's like debating to himself, quick death or torture, quick death or torture. <laughs> you know, what does this guy deserve? Uh, he, he walks in or he just punches through the door, basically, just with his shoulder. And uh, he's like, what's the problem, Jack? You deaf or just plain ignorant? You got business, you and me. Fishy business. And the guy's just sitting there, like, watching the TV, like, <laughs> just staring at it. And uh, Lobo's like, oh, so this creep wasn't responsible for his actions. He just follows some other creep's orders. Some other creep who's going to die. Guess you figure that lets you off the hook, huh, Jack? You wish, and he punches him right in the face. <laughs> and you Probably. see blood. Yeah, you just see blood and, like, a splat. And, yeah, the uh, panel up above that, he says, fetal's a giz. So, yeah, that's that <laughs> thing you're trying to remember. Fetal's giz yeah. is exclamation. <laughs> All right, so he's still looking for whoever, uh, like, he, you know, he now he wants to find out who programmed him. So. Mm-hmm. He's going to blame that guy for uh, killing his fish. And yep. uh, so now we cut back to the Legion crew and uh, Larissa is talking to Beck and everything. And, and again, Beck is just starting to freak out that Lobo's coming, you know, Lobo's coming. And yep. he's really sweating it now. And then we cut outside and we see uh, a little uh, yeah, He's like, oh, I sh- I'm beginning to think I should have just stayed home and become a drug addict like everyone else in Karn. <laughs> <laughs> What a home world. <laughs> so we cut outside and uh, Vero Dox is sitting there and uh, the Durlin walks up to him and they're chatting it up. And uh, he's like, you look, you know, Vero, hey, Vero, you look tired, you know. He's like, uh, he's telling me, you know, you need to relax. 
That's why it's mm-hmm. taking you so long to heal from the burns. If you just uh, he's like, take but with the Green Lantern Corps disbanded, what is there to prevent them? So he's basically like, yeah, the, whatever happened, I guess I don't know if it was the invasion or something else, but there is no Green Lantern Corps, I guess, currently. So he's like, somebody has to step in and kind of police the galaxies, and that's going to be us. But none of these people seem that interested in it. <laughs> Do you like, think? you know the ones to do it but they don't seem to have they're just all self-interested do you think the green lantern course they finally broke up when uh, someone looked around and said wait why why is there a chipmunk in here why <laughs> why <laughs> is uh what's with the hell jordan guy banging a 13 year old oh that's right that's i support <laughs> i suppose that's even more egregious than a chipmunk yeah but yeah we should shut the doors on this and, uh, until there's a proper investigation gotten out of, gotten out of hand so anyway, while they're just sitting there, oh, here comes Lobo. He comes walking over, and he says, uh, excuse me, gents. And uh, we see the Darlin's uh, a little scared right. there. And, and he says, uh, this is the place the program signal's coming from. You know, the one telling these uh, zomboids uh, what's what and why? It is. What of it? And the Darlin's trying to say, hey, Viral. Uh, hey, Viral. That's uh, hmm. Lobo. Yeah. But Viral's just like, yeah, don't worry. And he says, oh, yeah, sure, Garen Beck. He's in there. Funny haircut down the corridor, first on the right. And uh, Darlin's like, Viral? And uh, Lobo's, thanks. <laughs> and so Lobo's going to go beat up Garen Beck now, you know? Yep. And uh, the Darlin's like, hey, by all that's holy, Viral, uh, don't you know who that is? And he's like, take your own advice, old friend. Relax. I know what I'm doing. Just ask them indeed. I, I forget what that's yeah. a reference to. She's trying to plan. Yeah, he's basically trying to use Lobo to, you know, get everybody interested in policing the galaxy. Like somehow this will unite the team. By uh, having this fell, I guess. <laughs> having Lobo <laughs> just beat the hell out of everybody in the team. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically what happens. Lobo walks in. No one even notices him at first. And then uh, when Garen Beck turns around and sees him, and he says, hey, who are you? And he says, I'm Lobo. And uh, Garen Beck just faints, passes out right on the spot. <laughs> like he says, I'm looking for Garen Beck. And he says, that's me. Who wants to know? Like, you know Lobo's looking for you. <laughs> Maybe you don't admit to being who you are. Taste this guy's Lobo. So he's uh Lobo's just about to murder him while he's uh, passed out there. But uh that Larissa lady, she can also control like black energy, kinda like our buddy uh blackout the other time in the Avengers issue we did. <laughs> yeah. And she puts him in like a black <laughs> bubble, but Lobo just pokes his head right out of the black bubble, like no bus- nobody's business. And he says, uh, hey lady, you know, knock it off. Or I'm going to have to uh, whoop you. And so then uh, Strata, the big rock person, comes up behind him. And uh, he wants to, he taps Lobo on the shoulder. And he says, hey, you know, why don't you try that with me? Lobo just grabs him by one finger and judo flips him. Throws him over his head. <laughs> and then we see Stealth come in. Now, see, this is where she's feral. So she's yeah, jumping at him. <laughs> she's got her claws bared by, like, pulling in her fingers so much that she could not do anything to anyone. <laughs> And Lobo just grabs her, up you to death. Just tosses her around and uh, throws her across the room. So then yep. Strat is Lord. winding up to punch Lobo. And what does Lobo – well, she does actually hit Lobo and knocks him into the wall. So uh, Lobo gets very mad, and he referenced it earlier, Jank. But what does uh, Lobo do to Strata? <laughs> uh, he basically rips the rocks right off of her chest. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep, just tears a big hole in her. And I guess, yeah, I guess it does look crystalline a little bit. I thought that was just like a see-through window, essentially. But yeah. now it's, it's supposed to be crystal. <laughs> yeah, but then uh, she just, like, falls over, passes out on her face. So I thought she was dead, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, that, but now she's not dead. So now Larissa, she takes off her cloak. And, you know, she's a big fighter from her home planet. And she's like, all right, let's do this. So she tries to fight. Uh, I'm the champion of Talak. I'll take you down now. But uh, Lobo has no problems punching a lady. And uh, nope. <laughs> she basically takes one swing, misses, and then he just punches her right in the face and <laughs> then starts punching her again and again. So uh, not not much of a fight she's putting up here. But uh, Stealth comes up from behind him with, I don't know, a giant rock or something. <laughs> she's lying around the <laughs> yeah. house and uh, cracks him over <laughs> the head. Bowl, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, creep. <laughs> she smacks him over the head with it. And Lobo gets very mad. So he grabs her by both her hands. Yeah. And he just starts squeezing her hands and he says, say, uncle, say it. And she's tough. She will not say it. She will not give him the satisfaction. 
So he just smushes her hands, and her hands explode <laughs> in the yeah. blood and pulp. Ooh. So, so I'm like, well, that's terrible. Like, she's dead now, right? Like, she's just going to die. And yeah, uh, least, you know, she's not going to yeah, be on the team anymore. She's got no hands. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. I was very intrigued by this. I'm like, wow, you just murdered this lady with a – and so I went ahead, Jen. No, she's fine. Next issue, she's fine. She's not in, like, cast or anything. There's uh, no mention of it that I could see. <laughs> no... I mean, I guess if she's supposed to be feral, does she also have a healing factor like Wolverine and Sabretooth or something? Well, they say there's, like, those healing chambers or something that uh, Vera Docks is supposed oh, to rest in. Sure. So maybe that's what it is. But, yeah, I expected her to at least have, like, special some healing gloves on or something. Yeah. And, yeah, I didn't notice anything when I flipped ahead. So anyway, she passes off from the pain, and uh, he's got her blood all over him. And so now he goes, all he right. the uncle test. <laughs> now it's time to get you uh, there, uh, Garen Beck. Snap out of it, geek. You've caused me a lot of trouble. I want to see the guy who's going to rip you. I want you to see the guy who's going to rip your face off. And then uh, Viral Docs comes in. He says, Lobo, hold it. Stop. And he says he has a proposition, right? He's like, <laughs> He's yeah, like, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. And there's the old Godfather callback. And yep. next issue, the problem with drugs. <laughs> I so guess. There it is. Karen is going back to his home planet. <laughs> so uh, what did you think of this one, Jank? It was interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was fun. I liked watching Lobo just take the whole team apart piece by piece. That was pretty fun. Um the, you know, the first half wasn't the best. They're just kind of having the same argument back and forth, and it, I don't think it ended up changing anything, but it was it's still fine. It was an interesting premise. Yeah, again, we're jumping in out of nowhere with no knowledge of these yeah, characters exactly. and right in the mid-story. This is clearly a character-driven book, so mm-hmm. um, they're kind of going for that X-Men vibe, I guess, from, you know, where you used to have the inner squabbles of the team and everything. So I think that's cool. And uh, the characters in the team all seem somewhat interesting. I like that stealth lady, you know, until I find yeah. out she's rapey. <laughs> then I don't know about yeah. that, you know. But, uh, <laughs> kind of, yeah, it takes it down a notch for sure. But uh, I like that Larissa. Um, Beck was uh, good for a little comedic uh, relief there. Um, Lobo, uh, I like Lobo, but he's just, I don't like the way he's, depicted like drawn visually he just yeah. doesn't look <laughs> it definitely got better as they got into yes. the 90s for sure they 90s him up yeah. and it, it worked a lot better <laughs> but yeah. it's still better than he would looked in that omega man thing so you know it's it's, it's a step in the right direction <laughs> slow steady progress on lobo uh, but uh, i like viral docs i think he's an intriguing character you know because he's uh you don't know what side of the fence he's playing and uh He's always got something cooking upstairs. So, yeah, I, I like the way it's plotted, and uh, I thought the writing was pretty strong here. So, no real complaints. Uh, the art, uh, it's quite the test to try to make Lobo like a hero or even an anti-hero because he, he murdered his entire planet. <laughs> it's not like they were bad people. Like, they were peaceful, you know, loving people. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing we should mention. That, like yeah, that, <laughs> yes, that planet was like uh, how you pronounce it, Zari, and I like Cesarean. But um, it was <laughs> like a, like you said, a utopia, very peaceful and idyllic society. But then Lobo was born and it all went to hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like Thanos, I, I, I think, in the, yeah. the origin of Thanos. Wait yeah. a minute. They're just ripping off everything. <laughs> hell. Yep. There's only two ideas. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That's exactly <laughs> like Thanos. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. Anyway. Uh, the art from, uh, again, Giffen did the, br- the, uh, br- breakdowns and then, uh, Kitson did the finishes. I, I did not like the art very much. This just feels like that uh, late 80s, early 90s kind of style that I despise. Just, uh, I don't know. A little See, stiff. that's the style I normally like, but it didn't do as much for me here. I'll, I'll say that. A little stiff and posy and not as, uh, well, not even posy, just stiff, really. Um, like, yeah, not a lot of energy to the panels, not, nothing very dynamic. And again, Lobo no. just looks so scrawny. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't like it. Yeah. I don't know if that's him or just, just what they thought of Lobo at this point. I don't know if I can yeah. pin that yeah. on him, but yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not blaming him for how Lobo looks in terms of being skinny, but, but even like, mm-hmm. but when Lobo is like punching and everything, it, it's not fluid or dynamic. It's just stiff and not good looking. Uh, I, I think he draws a good stealth. She looked good. 
Um, yeah, very much so. But other than that, uh, it's fine. You know, perfect. But just yeah, not I mean, much. the hand crushing was was interesting. Yeah. That was a good scene. Thought he yeah, did the pretty well there. Yeah, was was solid. No issues there. You always could tell what was going on and everything. But just like the yeah. style itself isn't my favorite kind of style. Let's put it that way. Yeah. The Kevin Maguire covers is definitely much better. <laughs> so when you get yeah. to the issue itself, it's kind of a letdown. You're like, oh, this isn't quite as good. Because it's definitely a step down. But it was it was okay, I thought. It's not, you know, never going to be yeah. one of my favorites. But it got not awful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, um, I don't know. I'd probably give it a seven out of ten. I think it's a nice solid book. Um, yeah, I think I would probably great. read more if uh, you know. If, uh, yeah, if I had time, I would love to do that. But <laughs> will I? I? I don't know. Jake is very busy. <laughs> He's very busy. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. I definitely, I do, I do appreciate the character of Lobo. He's he's an interesting dude. See, I don't think I like Lo- Lobo. Is probably my least interesting character in this book. I probably like Doc's the uh, tops and. Uh, you know, and Doc uh, seems interesting because you yeah. don't know which way he's going to go. <laughs> yes. You could definitely see him going down the villain route very easily. Yeah, that's the reason I would read more of this is to see what he's cooking. So, yeah. Don't trust him. But uh, but it is weird that he's the guy who wants to police the universe and everything. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess I guess that's a certain brand of you grab power and then you just take over. Hey, this is kind of like the Thunderbolts and Baron Zemo that you were telling me about. <laughs> yeah. The same premise. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, there it is. Uh, what, what did you say? One out of ten for this? I think I'll also go seven. Yeah, yeah. I think that's about right. That's it's good solid fun. score. All right. So there is Legion eighty nine. And uh, next week on the show, we're going to do something a little different. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we have a fella uh, who we know named Dot Fan. That's the <laughs> name he goes by. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, He's a big supporter of the show, big supporter of the LCS Hockey Radio Show, and he's a terrible fantasy football manager. But <laughs> I believe he beat you last year in uh, the team. I have no memory of that whatsoever. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he requested – not to tell you how big of a supporter he is of this show, Jen, he bought seven T-shirts. Wow. <laughs> that's he bought seven <laughs> T-shirts. That's, that's obscene, some might say. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do is have a rule. If you buy seven T-shirts, you get to come on the show. So, <laughs> sure, I think that's fair. <laughs> but he's a big fan of Archie comics, and he wants to do an Archie comic book. So we are going to do Archie issue three twelve from nineteen eighty two, I believe, is the year. Okay, did he pick this issue or? No, I picked it. I was just looking through right. covers, and I thought something that would make a nice thumbnail. And there's uh, Archie hitting on a foxy cheerleader on the cover. <laughs> So, just see, there's not a lot of hand squishing in this one. <laughs> no, I've never <laughs> read an Archie comic. Have you ever read an Archie? Uh, no. I mean, I've read, I think, other books published by Archie comics, but no, never have actually read an Archie comic. I guess when I was a kid, Archie just seemed to be always around. Like, I know all, I know of Archie, but I've yeah, never I mean, all the read characters. any Archie. Yeah, you know, Jughead. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I get this. Yeah. <laughs> I get what this is. I don't need to read it. <laughs> So next week we'll we'll experience Archie for the first time. It's nice to get a little break in there, you know, and uh, mix it up. Yeah. So our, uh, our buddy Dot Fan will be here joining us next week to yeah, talk I'm, about Jughead will be uh, yeah, eligible for best hero. <laughs> <laughs> he does. I did flip through the book. It's kind of like one of them uh, uh, books where there's four little stories or whatever, three or four stories. Oh, you know, one of them deals. And I, I believe Jughead in is, is in at least a couple of them. But oddly enough, there is no story where Archie is playing football and hitting on a cheerleader like is depicted on the cover. Like, there is nothing about that cover <laughs> in the book at all. So That seems like a story that writes itself. Because <laughs> who's his girlfriend? <laughs> Veronica, right? Is Veronica his well, girlfriend? Betty and Veronica, right? Betty and Veronica. Oh, yeah, I can't remember. Two of them. Yeah. So, because the, the one is like, uh, Veronica was the dark-haired one. Or, or yeah, and Betty was the blonde. Yeah, so I, Veronica's also on the cover, and she's uh, yelling at Archie that he's trying to pick up this uh, blonde cheerleader. But the flea market fantasy logo will be right over Veronica in the thumbnail, so you're not going to be able to see her. But uh, that's a shame. Man. 
<laughs> you'll, you'll see the cheerleaders. Sign up for Patreon if you want to see Veronica. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the flea market fantasy Patreon. You can watch Jank react to things. That will be on the Patreon as well. Who? <laughs> watch me react to the comic. Oh, <laughs> Jack's reaction videos when he reads the comic book. All right, so that's next week, Archie. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And if you want to buy a T-shirt, merch.19books.com, D.O.T. Mm-hmm. fan bought seven. So you can yeah, buy seven and be on the show. <laughs> be great. So anyway, until next week, don't get any jank on you. <laughs>